Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for our Advisacon webinar series. We're establishing document controls, and we're going to be using Microsoft SharePoint. Now, whether your team collaborates virtually, in person, or both, document management is a central part of successful work management. You want to make sure that the documents can be found and shared by the right team members. So what we're going to do is we'll open up SharePoint so we can look at the benefits and features and why you need to be centralizing your documents in SharePoint. Here at Advisacon, we have deep roots in project management. You know, everyone does projects, even if they're calling it programs, events, or just simply work. But they don't always use the best tools to get the job done. Our mission is to deliver technology, tools, and training to maximize impact, productivity, and purpose. A little bit about myself. My name is Sean, and I'll be your instructor today. I am a project advisor and academy trainer. I do have a background in math education, and that just means that I've got a long history of problems. I do have experience in using 365 for solutions for our customers, and I have a decade's worth of experience in delivering instruction and training. I am a PMP. I have a uh, certification with, in Teams given by Microsoft, and I am a semi-professional dad joke teller. For example, a man walks into a bank and goes to the teller. He asks the teller, can you check my balance? So the teller pushed him. His balance wasn't that great. All right, continue with our agenda for today. We're going to talk about a PMIS. That's a PMI term, and it stands for more than just Project Management Institute. And if you're not familiar with that, we'll talk more about that today. And we'll see how you can use a PMIS for success. Then we'll talk about SharePoint. We'll, we'll elaborate more on exactly what is SharePoint and, and the house that it, it's built around it. Then we'll go ahead and I'll actually demo launch the SharePoint site with the uh, direct purpose of getting a document library started so you can start centralizing your documents uh, on, on a SharePoint site. Then we'll bring it back together and start talking about uh, the benefits of, again, why you need to be using SharePoint. All right, a PMIS. According to the PMBOK, a PMIS is a project management information system. You can see the definition on screen. It's an information system consisting of the tools and techniques used to gather, integrate, and disseminate the outputs of a project management processes. Uh, so a couple of keywords there. It's an information system. How do we share information? And then its focus is to is on the outputs of the project management process. You know. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be a tech-based or web-based uh, system, but with today's uh, remote work and accessibility to the internet, uh, you know, there's so many advantages by using a cloud-based system. So an information system should be leveraging uh, the web for that. Furthermore, in regards to the outputs, you know, all documents really are, are, are work that drives towards deliverables. And if it's if it's a document that isn't driving towards a deliverable, it's it's unnecessary. So be considerate about when you're using documents that they are centralized in your PMIS and that they are actually helping the output. Now if you might think, well, you know, we we just get things done the way we get it done. We don't really need a PMIS. Well consider the, these statistics. 30% uh, of people say that you know, they're using unofficial file sharing tools, and that just opens your organization up to security uh, concerns there. Uh, furthermore, uh, secondly, if if people are working on the wrong version, you know, 47% of people uh, polled said they're working on the wrong version, you might be duplicating work, and you might be, you know, adding uh, junk work, uh, junk information to your system. As they say, you know, if junk comes in, it's just going to be junk coming out. So we want everyone to have the current version. Uh, next uh, online, uh, you see that 73% of people report they have issues locating documents. And, and that's one of the biggest benefits of, of switching over to a centralized uh, hub such as SharePoint. You reduce that wasted time. And then most of all, you know, we want to care for the well-being of our team members. And if, if people are yelling at the computer, 
uh, then you know that's just frustration. It's unnecessary energy exerted in the wrong direction. So uh, P, uh, PMIS helps to reduce these risks, help mitigate them uh, towards zero percent. So hopefully that your your teams are using the correct tools. They're working on the current version. They you know they're streamlined process, easily finding their documents, and uh, and that the only yelling they'll ever do is yells of uh, of joy at at the completion of a successful project delivery. All right, in business, it could be said that some document to deliver, others deliver documents, but really everyone documents. Now with that understanding, SharePoint has continually been built upon and around much like the framework of a house. And I'll elaborate a little bit more about the building of SharePoint. What you see here is the first and last page of a really neat tech parody written by Cashman, Hanley, and Jackson. It's called the, this is the service that SharePoint built. And it tends to, uh, it's, well, it's based on the nursery rhyme, you know, the house that Jack built, but it, it tends to uh, illustrate and demonstrate one piece at a time, as you can see on the graphic on the right, all the pieces that are built around SharePoint. And it does a really nice job taking it layer by layer, item one item at a time, and showing you how SharePoint really has become the centerpiece of collaboration. It can be found on the web. Go ahead and search for the service that SharePoint built. Much of the confusion around SharePoint is just knowing where am I in, in the in the in the SharePoint hierarchy. So this, this helps to explain the layers. At the top layer, you do have the SharePoint site, the app itself. And I'll, and when you come down below that, that's when you start getting into sites. SharePoint is broken up into sites, uh, much like a website, right? And many organizations do treat those sites like intranet sites where you can communicate with team members. And that's one of the site options is a communication site. Another site option, and the one we'll be exploring today, is a team site. This is where you develop the document library and then the other apps listed at that third level down, where you see the home page, pages, lists, document library. I, could, I call those apps that are, are that can be utilized to help build out your site. Uh, the home page is just like it says, the home page. Pages are additional pages where you can display more information. Uh, there's many web parts you could display on a page. A couple of them are lists, uh, simply using the Microsoft List app to create a list. And then uh, what, we, what we'll be looking at today is that document library. And underneath document library, you see folders and files. Uh, that's what we're driving to. But I hope you understand, help, uh, this helps you understand that when you build up a SharePoint site, these are the layers so you understand where you're pointing at what you're looking at when you are in the document library. Furthermore, adding to the SharePoint services are apps such as Teams and OneDrive. Now, while they are apps in and of themselves, they both utilize and leverage the document library. Now, I'll explain a little bit, a little bit more about this relationship, um, especially what is the relationship between OneDrive and SharePoint? Here's how we like to think about OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, people often use those terms interchangeably. OneDrive should be considered my stuff, things that I'm individually working on, things that uh, not everyone should be seeing, uh, whether they're drafts, you know, works in progress, uh, things that definitely should be a uh, limited view. Now, OneDrive has the ability to have the most open view, in fact, when sharing outside of your organization, that's where I suggest you might want to put your documents is OneDrive. Uh, it just creates the least amount of barriers because it's your OneDrive, your, your, your stuff. Contrast that with SharePoint, that, that should be considered where everyone's things go. For example, published documents, uh, work processes, uh, things that concern governance, any policies, anything that should be available to everyone should be in SharePoint. Now, there are permission controls you can still use in SharePoint to limit the accessibility. For example, not all HR files should be accessible to the entire organization, and not all finance documents maybe you want available to the entire organization. Now, the connection between OneDrive and SharePoint, and yes, there is a connection, is that 
from OneDrive, you can still see the same files in SharePoint. You can create what they call shortcuts to the files in SharePoint. The benefit of this is that you don't need to go to the SharePoint site. You can continue working from your OneDrive and whether that's the web base or if your organization has synchronized your OneDrive to your local uh, hard drive, you know, that's again the benefit. You can save things to your local hard drive that syncs to the uh, the OneDrive app, which then updates the SharePoint file. So it's very much connected. Again, this is the service or the house that SharePoint built. Here's an example of a view from OneDrive on the left. You can see that uh, the OneDrive item is uh, is uh, marked on the top, and then on on the left side it says where it says My Files. That's exactly where we're looking at to see this folder, uh, the My Files general folder, and we're looking at the those two items on the left. And but we, really, where are these items actually located? They're located in SharePoint and the image on the right, on the on the Mark Eight project team, and that's where those two uh, items actually are located. So you can think of OneDrive as a view. It's just it's a view that looks at SharePoint. All in all, it's really all SharePoint. All right, let's go ahead and demo and actually look at uh, launching a SharePoint site. This is going to be a very basic launch, not nothing too complicated. Again, we're we're aiming at just getting document management uh, started. Here's what I aim to do. We're just going to launch a site. We're going to call it the the balance improvement program. You know, we we have characters who uh, don't have very good balance, so we're going to improve our balance here. Um, I'm going to I'll go ahead and uh, control the, the, the privacy settings, making sure that it is public. Again, SharePoint should host everyone's documents. We'll go ahead and navigate to the documents folder so that uh, and then launch a new folder called administrative. And then we'll peek behind the curtain, go to the backstage and see where are the library settings and especially looking at the versioning settings. Again, when we're looking at document controls, we want to say, you know, who can uh, update them? Are there approvals that need to happen before they're updated? We want to control the junk in, junk out. We want good in, good out. Here's an example of what we're driving at. We're, we're having the we're going to open the SharePoint app, launch a site underneath it. We're going to look at those two items, the home page and document library. We'll build a folder and add a file. And then as it says on the top right, we'll go ahead and uh, play with the version settings so that you can be sure that you are using and updating correctly uh, to your documents. All right, we're going to go to Microsoft365.com. I want you to see the path on how we would launch a new SharePoint site for those who are not yet familiar with that. We'll open the waffle, that's what they call this icon, and click SharePoint. When the site launches, you'll see the frequent sites here. Many people have asked, is this configurable, changeable? Unfortunately not. What comes up here are the frequent sites. Let's go ahead and launch a site. As I mentioned before, there's two types of SharePoint sites. It could be a communication site. This is very much like it says, you want to drive communications and push communications to your team members. On the left is what we'll be creating, a team site. This is where you have the documents a library for your team members. Let's name the site the Balance Improvement Program. It's running as checks. Can I have that group email address, the site address? and privacy, make sure it's public. Again, the, the big idea of a SharePoint site is that everyone in the organization can access these files. But as I mentioned before, you can control it with a private privacy settings. Okay, here's where you have the opportunity to add team members. So you, while it's available to everyone, if you want people to actually be in there and maybe designate a, a role as an owner or a member, this is where you can start doing that. When you first get your new site, you'll have the option to apply a template. Now, this is something for a mature organization to develop. If you want your, your site to look, to have a certain look and feel with certain elements displayed or what they call web parts, this is where you can add a template. We'll go ahead and use the out of the box settings for now. I'm going to go ahead and draw your attention to the menu here on the left. 
You can see some options such as conversations, documents, notebook, pages. You can go ahead and play with uh, those and see where they take you. Uh, we're looking at especially documents in this webinar. All right, here really is the document library. You can think of it much like a directory on your local hard drive. And really, when you, all you have to do is start adding folders and files. We'll call this one administrative. And I can open that up and I can see the, the file path here, documents, administrative, and then you can just upload files as you need. All right, we've just added our files using the upload button from our, uh, so that we pull the files from our local directory. Something else I wanna show you is how to implement more stringent document controls. We open up the settings here from the cog, the wheel, and we go to library settings, click on more library settings. There's a lot of options here, and I wanna point you to the versioning settings. Here's where you can control the versions of the documents in your document library. You can ask, you can say that things need to be approval, approved before they're submitted. That way uh, the site owners can say, yes, this is valid to be used. This is, you know, this is the governance. This, this is what our, our team should be using. You can create major and minor versions so that every time you save, uh, it'll it'll prompt uh, and say, do you want to create this as a major version or a new minor version? That'll add the little dot one, dot two, so on and so forth. Another a security item to implement is drafts. Who should see draft items? Drafts, for example, are works in progress, and if your teams will be easily uh, thrown off by the, the new item in there that's not yet fully developed, then maybe we should keep it only users who can approve items and not anyone who can read the items. Um, here's a really good one uh, that when you're doing uh, updates to documents, but people can still use current versions, uh, you could say require documents to be checked out. That way they are, uh, people know that there's a checked out version that's being updated, uh, but you can use the current version until it's approved. We've updated the versioning settings. Let's go back to our page, our home page rather. So we've we've launched the site. We can get to the document library, and from here is where we can begin to share, either using this button or that one. One of the major benefits is that everyone who's who knows we're using the balance improvement program can come to SharePoint and say, I know I'm supposed to be using the Balance Improvement Program and search from here. And they'll find the site. Okay, let's bring it together. We were able to establish a PMIS, a Project Management Information System, that again points everyone to the right version, the right place, using the approved tools by our organization, and again, hopefully reducing time to find the documents and again, reduce frustration. Uh, SharePoint really is, as it's aptly named, the SharePoint. Hopefully you see the structure of it and that there's a lot of apps that are built around SharePoint, but it really becomes the place to go for almost all parts of your work management. And we looked at document controls, uh, implementing those versioning settings, whether you get major, minor versions or requiring checkout before you proceed. This allows uh, you to be sure that the right version is being used so that you get good in and good out. Thank you for watching this webinar. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions, like or follow us on our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We offer many free trainings in our online academy. You can access those by visiting advisacon.thinkific.com. For project managers, simply become a member of Advisacon Academy to receive the code to redeem those PDUs. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.